this whole Hey guys, welcome back to Effing Priceless. We are super excited for this episode. So this episode, we're basically going to be talking about some of the stories that didn't fit in our other episodes. There's a lot of shit that we talk about, and there's just stories that we remember right after it yeah. or before, or we'll mention it to each other like, oh, we didn't even mention you know, the next day or exactly. later or that night. Our friends will see it, and they'll be like, wait, you didn't talk about this. And it's like, oh shit, you're right. So this episode is comprised of a lot of those stories that connect with other trips or other stories that we've yeah. told you. So, or, you know, uh, the other day, okay, so if y'all are following our uh, social media accounts, I like to post random videos where, where I'll hide and scare the shit out of you. Yeah, that's Like a we've thing. talked about. So I've done that uh, <laughs> twice in the past couple days. Yeah. And uh, it was getting me to think about other times I've scared people, and I, I remembered uh, the snipe story. Okay, Bombay is going crazy over yeah. there. <laughs> no. Sorry, guys. The cat's moving the entire mic. Yeah. Um, so, do you remember, did you ever have a snipe story? I didn't. No, you okay. guys never did that to me, probably because I would never go hunting with you ever again. <laughs> no, but it's a it's a tradition. So, a snipe story is a, uh, a time-honored, passed-down prank that you pull on young hunters. So, when the hunter is young, and, you know, typically it's, you know... For the most part, it's friends and family, like uncles, cousins, yeah. you know, that all go hunting out together, or at least for me. And when the hunter's quite young, I would say like, I don't know, nine, ten, when they're out there, and uh, they'll tell them the story. And this story, I actually looked it up to see, it, it dates back to the 1840s. That really? That they would do to newcomers and oh, tell them this snipe story. That's hilarious. So what they do is they tell you that there's this animal that is called a snipe. Mm-hmm. It doesn't fucking exist. Yeah. <laughs> so there's variations of what they tell young hunters. Like some of them say it's like a, a big crane, mm -hmm. but you know, like big birds when they chase you or they have spurs on them, like emus and capybaras and yeah. um, uh, of course, ostriches are dangerous too. Capybara isn't a bird. Capybara. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was I'm like, sorry. What? Yeah, you're correct. <laughs> yeah, not the little like rodent pig. Rodent yeah. Thing. Yes, you're correct. <laughs> um, the other Australian colorful bird. Okay. So. Yeah, they'll tell you it's a big fucking bird that's going to come after you. Or they, they make up an animal. Yeah. So you're afraid of it. They describe it to be very, like, weary and, like, quick to ambush you if you surprise it. And it's, like, common in that area. Yeah, I'm wherever sure. the fuck you live, it, yeah. snipes are there. They're, like, everywhere. <laughs> yeah, wherever the fuck you happen to be hunting, there's a fucking snipe. <laughs> so they get you going, and they, they'll tell you this for a while. And then, you know, may, it may be a couple hunts later, because maybe they'll be like, oh, shit, did you hear that snipe? And they'll be like, what, you, you heard one? Oh, man, you're okay. You know, they'll get you going for right. a while. It's not just like a one-time thing. Well, then they'll take you out of the woods and just scare the shit out of you, embarrass you. It's really funny afterwards. And they're like, we've done it. And you'll look around and like, your uncle's like, I remember mine. You know, your cousin's, I remember mine. They did mine two years ago, you know? Yeah, it's just so, a tradition. Yeah, it's a tradition. It's just something really funny to do. And I remember uh, when our family got me, we went way out. It was a similar thing that I just described to you. I had already heard about this animal, <laughs> this elusive snipe. And um, I went way out there. And the way we were walking through the, the brush and we were uh, night hunting for pigs was that they were, like, purposely letting me be in the front of the group. Mm -hmm. So when I was out there, I was next to uh, my two cousins. Um, one of them is four years older than me. The other one is eight, Joey. The Joey. one that threw up in the picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Joey, good old Joey. We love Joey. So we were out there, and at that time, Joey's probably, you know, 16, uh, which means his younger brother was 12, and I was like eight or nine. Yeah. And we're in the front of the group, and like all the dads and uncles and shit like that are behind us. Well, we're walking, and I'm out there, you know, leading the pack, you know, looking around, keeping my eyes open, listening. And then from behind, uh, one of my uncles just screams, oh, my God, it's a snipe. And they still give me shit to this day when uh, they actually brought it up to remind us of the story the yeah. other day. Uh, they're like, do you remember yours? And I was like, oh, yeah, kind of. And then they told me, and I was like, oh, yeah, definitely. So what happened was I got scared as fuck. I thought I'm going to die. <laughs> I go solo panic mode and, you know, <laughs> Everyone for himself, you know? Every man yeah, for himself. Hell yeah, hell so yeah. Survival of the fittest. <laughs> and Joey, our older cousin, had already known about it, of course, so he kind of chilled. But they were actually trying to get me and my other cousin that's four years older than me. He was 12, I was eight. Yeah. Uh, neither of us had, you know, they had gotten us yet. So right. we both scream and turn around and start running towards the truck. 
but I'm a lot faster than him, so <laughs> I pass him up very quickly and I shove him to the ground. <laughs> like pretty much like, take him, take him, take him, snipe, <laughs> fuck him. And I run and I jump on the hood of the truck and by the time I even know what's going on, like everyone's just dying, laughing, yeah, and roaring. Of course. And then they're like, you just push your cousin <laughs> to the ground. Like you didn't even say like, let's escape together. Oh, hell no. Fuck him. Everyone for themselves. <laughs> you needed to get away. You needed to leave the snipe something. <laughs> you know, it, it's like, uh, they always tell you with the bear, you don't have to run outrun a bear. You just have to outrun your friend. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> kind of that situation. I ain't going down. I'm not going to be snipe food. Oh my god! So it's a it's a tradition that hunters do, and it's it's always really funny to hear everyone's snipe story, and especially because if you come from different regions, they all have different you know variations or whatever the, of they might say to the young hunter. Right. So, uh, like we've said in other episodes, our whole family are big hunters. And then when I hit high school, I started inviting my friends to come with me. Mm-hmm. So my best friend in high school, uh, Mike, he came out with me all the time to our property before we had built the house here. Before you saw the UFO. Way before the UFO. I saw the <laughs> UFO when the house was here, already built. So um, nothing was cleared from the land yet to build the house. So it's a few acres of just woods. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's here in the hill country in Texas. So it's quite thick woods, the mesquite and cedar trees. You can't just walk right through it. Right. And uh, sorry, Kalu is about to jump on the door. Um, it's, it's pretty thick. So when we go out into our land to you know, hunt and look around and watch animals, uh, you got to walk through them, some thick trees to get to it. Yeah, for sure. And where I had my hunting blind on the property, it was, I want to say, I want to be accurate, like four or 500 yards from the street okay. where the property you know started, where we parked the cars. Right. So I had gone out here a few times, and I had told my best friend Mike about the snipe story, and he is dying laughing. And he's <laughs> like, dude, we got to get somebody. I was like, oh, of course. So we already knew our target. It was one of our really good friends, Eddie, at the time. And Eddie was, uh, he had never been hunting. His family didn't hunt, you know, oh, okay. so he's quite weary of the woods. Right. You know, he's like, I don't know about going out and I don't even get a gun. I was like, I don't trust you, you know, with any kind of weapon. Yeah, he's only never me. shot a gun. It's me, but y'all come with me. Right. And, you know, uh, Mike hyped him up. Dude, it's so much fun. It's relaxing out there. We'll drink. <laughs> we'll just chill. He had a fake idea at the time. So we'd get like a six pack of whatever yeah. and drink it out there. And we're like, okay, cool. Let's go. So we had told him we had been multiple times. And then one of the times, you know, Mike kind of let it slip. Man, dude, we almost saw that snipe out there. We heard it coming. And Eddie's like, of course, takes the bait. The fuck is the snipe? <laughs> so I, you know, then lay it on thick. And so what I told Eddie was here in South Texas, actually in all of Texas and most of the United States, there's a fucking pig problem, a wild pig problem. Right. They're everywhere. They're uh, an invasive species. You don't even actually have to have a hunting, or yeah, you do have to have a hunting license, but you don't have to have a tag to kill them. You can kill as many as you want right. because they're that in- invasive and they multiply so fast and they're pushing out native species and hurting them. Right. So it's open season because they're not good for our land. Um, I thought you didn't have to have a hunting license if you see one on your property now. I thought that you could shoot it. Obviously, if you don't have big enough like acreage, you can't use a gun, but you can shoot them with bows. Um did, that's I think our cousin Joey, Joey just, just look looked up? it up and said that was true but it was it, I don't know if it's always been that way oh okay but yeah they're a danger they're a problem um, everyone hates them city developers land farmers ranchers they destroy everything yeah so I in this pig problem here in South Texas I played on it I said oh dude a snipe is like have you ever seen a wild pig and of course he hasn't and mm-hmm. for those of you who haven't they get fucking big Huge. they can hit three four hundred pounds the big girls the and the big boys the big hogs and the sows well you know a typical one is gonna be like 100 pounds maybe 150. um i told him that a snipe was the term for the if you will silverback gorilla the biggest <laughs> most dominant alpha male like in gorillas yeah of hogs okay so a snipe is the biggest yeah. meanest brutal most territorial hog for like all that area okay that pushes all the other males out kind of like a solitary animal would do you know like tigers right. and shit it's only one uh, male for a certain area that's what I told him. Okay. <laughs> and he's like, oh my God. I was like, dude, they're super fucking dangerous. The thing about pigs, which is true. If they come after you, they can fucking hurt you. Oh, they can, absolutely. They can kill you. Yeah. They're faster than you think. They're faster than you are. They're faster than humans. Um, and they're just little like bulldozers. They just fucking go. And they if they get you down, you. Yeah. They can, yeah, they can cut you up. And they have big tusks also. Oh my goodness. So he's like, oh shit, man. It's like, don't worry, dude. We should be fine. Um, it's just... 
uh, Bombay you know? is messing with our setup. <laughs> the cat. So we just always got to keep an eye out for them. And I, I had told him before we brought him out hunting, mm-hmm. if we ever get in a situation, climb a tree. Yeah. Find a fucking tree and climb it. Pigs can't climb trees, you know? So that's your solution. So we already had this set up thinking we're going to scare the shit out of him. He's going to climb way up in a tree. We're just going to be dying <laughs> laughing, you know? Okay. So we get to the property and we got to walk all the way through the woods. And we're getting closer to where my, uh, my hunting blind was. And it was like maybe 50 yards away. And I knew I still had to go. Well, I told, uh, so it's Mike, my good friend of mine, and then Eddie, our, uh, our setup, our victim. <laughs> so we're walking all together and it's dark because we're going to go night hunting, right? And we go out into the woods and I give the flashlight, the only flashlight to Mike. Mm-hmm. And I already told him, you know, we had already planned this out. So we get to a point where we're getting closer to the blind and a, a hunting blind is just like a, a structure that you can build or they sell them that you sit in. It's like a tent, like a fort, whatever you want to call it. It's yeah. where you sit in and you hunt. Uh, it's called blind because you don't want to be seen. <laughs> so uh, we're getting there and it's, it's coming up and I tell him, okay, I'm going to go around the other side to make sure there's not anything there first where the entrance is, right. you know, the brush, the clearing, and then y'all come in. And so, you know, he, Eddie doesn't fucking know what we're talking or doing. He's like, okay, yeah, sounds good, man. I was like, all right, man. And I told him, be careful of the sound. It sounds, um, you know, I don't know. Uh, Mike, what would you think it sounds like? And we're racking our brains when we were telling him. And we're like, and, you know, I remember Mikey's like like a screaming banshee. And Eddie was just like, oh, what? And he was like, you know, like a, a sorrow siren witch spirit? Like that, you'll know. I was like, okay, dude, like, that's what you told him? He's like, I, I, I had to think on my feet, man. I didn't know what to say. But and that's what the first thing, that's the first thing that came to his mind? Well, because we didn't expect him to ask that. We were, I had already explained what it was and it looked yeah. like, but not what it sounded like. <laughs> so when he said that, I was like, oh, shit, okay. All right, that's where we're going with it. So we already had this ready, you know, knowledge. Now I have to make this sound. <laughs> so I split off and go straight into the woods, and they're walking down kind of like a game trail. And a game trail is just where animals frequent that, like, that's their highway of crossing with, through the woods. So through them stepping so much through it, it's cleared a little bit. Right. You can see a little walkway, you know. So they're kind of going through the, the game trail, the walkway, and it, it's still thickly wooded, but that, that way you don't have to really move around and you're not going to get hit in the face of branches. Yeah. And I cut around, and I had already told Mike what to do. So then he turns off the flashlight. And he's like, oh, shit. And he's, like, hitting it, you know, acting like <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, like, like it went out. Like, oh, fuck the flashlight. And it's pitch black. The moon's out, so I can see when I'm walking through the woods mm-hmm. if I walk slow. And it's our property. I fucking know this. Yeah, area. exactly. So he's hitting it, hitting it. And he's, I can hear him visibly getting, you know, like, really anxious. Like, dude, turn it on. Try it again. Like, dude, <laughs> dude, you know, he's getting upset. So he's, like taking out his phone and trying to, you know, look around. Yeah. And I had already snuck it up to them, gotten pretty close, but not, you know, not too close to get hurt. He, heard? Heard? Snuck? To found get out. heard? Yeah. <laughs> so all I do is I, uh, I take like a rock, I pick it up, and I throw it. And you just hear <laughs> breaking branches. And Eddie's like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? <laughs> and Mike's like, dude, calm down, dude. It's probably just like a deer moving through the woods. And he's like, no, I don't know, man. So oh, I threw the rock away oh from him, God. but I'm closer to them. So then I reach over to me and I snap a twig. And he's like, dude, that's close. That's fucking close. And Gabe's <laughs> like, dude, shh, sh- we need to listen. Hold on, dude. Like, pay attention. Be careful. And um, so when he's doing that, I can hear Eddie, like, freaking out. Yeah. So it's pitch black. It's quiet. <laughs> and they're just staring in my direction. And I'm, you know, a little bit of a way. And I'm in the woods. Mm-hmm. They can't see me. And then I just let it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I do it over and over and again. I am and so Eddie, sorry for those listening through headphones. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. I had to do the noise. That's the noise I did. So he screams. I mean, we're in the middle of the woods and it's pitch black and you hear that. And I did, I mean, I did that quiet right now. I did that real loud outside. Real fucking loud. And of course, Mike's. It's a fucking snipe run! <laughs> and Eddie's screaming. I mean, like, he's going to get it. Like, an animal's going to attack him. Yeah. Really, he's afraid. So I just hear crashing through the woods. <laughs> and we had walked all the way down carefully through the woods. Yeah. Carefully through branches and not try and get hit and poked and, like, cut up. Mm-hmm. He's running towards the back to the entrance of the property, like, running back to the car. Oh, my and God. it's a good while. It's a good ways. <laughs> 
and you just hear him running, tripping, falling, screaming, cussing because he's getting hurt, oh. and we're yelling. Like we're first off, we're dying laughing hysterically. We're crying in in you know pitch black, and yeah. the Lord's dying laughing, both of us. And then as soon as we can catch our breath, we start screaming, "Eddie, Eddie, stop, stop, stop!" <laughs> and you know, I don't know if he was just like if he realized what happened at that time, or he still was like, "Fuck it, I'm he getting felt, the car." Yeah. All the way up to the car, and we're just dying laughing, <laughs> and we can hear him still cussing and screaming, like pretty far away, oh like my. screaming. <laughs> Poor guy. And then guy. he's cussing and yelling at us. And the thing is, like, of course we drove, so we had the keys. Yeah. So like, he's just saying, I mean, if he drove, he'd be fucking gone and be like, "Fuck you guys! I'm never fucking talking to you again." And of course we're dying laughing, we're crying. Yeah. Taking our sweetest time walking back to the car <laughs> and just laughing the whole way. We get to the car and he's so mad. Oh. His shirt my God. is so cut up and torn up, and his jeans, <laughs> and he's like bleeding. Like oh he cut himself God. running through the fucking trees. Like poor guy. I mean, he he thought he was gonna die. <laughs> But, yeah. At least he didn't push Mike down and be like, fuck this. Fuck like, you, everyone for themselves. I mean, <laughs> that's impressive, bro. There you go. You got it in you, fight or flight. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so that was that was a snipe. That's the one person that I've done the snipe story that's to. That's absolutely hilarious. I don't think Dad would have let you like do a snipe story on me. Um, yeah, we could have. Oh, sure. my God. Yeah. I would but yeah, that's out. a com- that's a very common thing for hunters. That's hilarious. And if you if you say it, they're like no, and then if they like ask their family, they're like yeah, actually, yeah, you know, there is something. We have our version of that. No, I didn't even know about that until our family brought it up and was like, oh my god, you guys should tell the snipe story. And I was like, what? Like a I hadn't like a sniper? That. Like a snipe that's, is when like when I said that. Actually, when I said that, that's exactly what you said. You're like, I know. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, is there a sniper in our woods? What are you talking about? <laughs> Dear Lord. So that, for example, is yeah. a hilarious that's what we, story. We forgot to bring up, and that's it's really funny to do. <laughs> oh, my God. Y- y'all y'all listening? I say y'all a lot. I guess the We're Texas from shows, Texas. Yeah. Um, y'all listening? For sure, if you have, like, family members that are hunters, just ask them. Ask uh, yeah. Them because I bet you half of them have one or know a really funny one of someone you know. And it'll be really funny. For sure. It's definitely. just like a universal joke. It's like saying there's Santa Claus or some shit. Like, no. <laughs> it's just everyone does it. <laughs> That's so funny. If you guys have, like, really funny snipe stories or know of one, let us know. Because we think they're hilarious. They're super <laughs> funny. Because it's, it's when you're a novice hunter. You are not experienced with the woods. You don't know what's out there. Yeah. Like, people out here hear coyotes and the ones that aren't aware of what that animal really is, they think they can kill and hurt you. It's like, it's super rare that they would ever attack a human. Yeah. I mean, we're talking very, very rare. And to hurt you, like, you need to calm down. They're not, they're not fucking wolves. Right. You know? Like, Coyotes do hurt our animals, though. Our pets, yeah. They can take yeah. out some pets. But, oh, dear Lord. A hog would fuck one up more. Oh, for sure. I mean, a and fucking wild deer killed my dog. Also, like, <laughs> that's not yeah. Hog, yeah, hogs are very common Super, around here. There are so many. Literally Super driving to our common. house, if I drive at night, especially when I worked at the bar, coming mm-hmm. home before in the morning, I would see herd, not herds, uh, whatever the little groups are called, run by all the time. Yeah, and even the little babies, like, they're everywhere. They reproduce so fucking fast. Yeah. And they have giant litters. Like Huge really big litters. litters. Yes, literally, you'll see them crossing the road, and it's like, well, I'll be here for a minute, yeah. and they're all just running around. But yeah, yeah I think they can have. I want to say like it's like fifteen to twenty 50, babies yeah. usually, and I believe it's two or three times a year. Oh, I didn't know that. They can pump out, and then they're sexually active or like a sexually mature. Mm-hmm. They're like four or five months old. Oh shit! So they're just always pumping constantly out. They're reproducing. So many. And the sows, they get massive. Yeah. I mean, the big hogs do too, but the sows are fucking huge. And you see them run across like trails or, or roads up here. Mm-hmm. And there's like 20 or 30 babies behind them. There's a ton. Yeah. But Jesus Christ. Hogs are a problem. For yes, sure. Actually, definitely. it's so such a bad problem here in some of the southern states that they fucking do helicopter hunts. Do they really? Yes. I didn't know that. You get in a helicopter with an automatic machine gun and they fly over properties to take out herds of them. What the fuck? They're such a problem. Oh That's God. how much of a problem they are. They're such an invasive, terrible, terrible problem. Damn. And they're not from here. They're from uh, Europe. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Those wow. fuckers probably. Or like the <laughs> Russian hogs that are uh, wild here. Yeah. That's where they're from. Oh, They have Jesus. different hair, you can tell. 
Okay. Interesting. Also, fun fact that apparently is common knowledge that it's, I did not know. <laughs> okay. So I use this term, it's common knowledge, kind of loosely. Very loosely. But when it, when it comes to animals, I just think that, I don't know, I know it. Like, I'm like, yeah, of course. What do you know? That's not a thing. So he told me this one time that I was like, what do you mean? So he said that any domestic slash little cute pink pigs that you see, yeah. any one of them, if you put them in the wild, that they will grow brown fur, tusks, everything. Not, not necessarily brown. They are a different color. Well, like they'll camo to whatever environment they're in. Um, no, pigs pigs have a lot of different colors. Some of them look like cows, like uh, like uh, Betsy, like black and white cow. Yeah. They have spots. They look like dogs that are like uh, almost like brindle coloring. Yeah. They have streaks of red and brown in them. Oh, so they have a lot of like. But mixed they color. change from pink. They the <laughs> the key thing to say is. <laughs> First off, they grow long hair, and they are no longer just, like, skin. You know, like, when you see a fat pig, like yeah. a big pink pig, it's just, like, skin. skin. It's covered in hair, wild, coarse hair, and they automatically grow tusks. Like, to survive in the wild. They Yeah, they automatically, they're one of the only animals, there's a few other ones, too, but they're one of the only animals that if you release them to the wild, they devolve. They automatically oh. go from, because we're the ones who took them out of the wild and domesticated them. And domesticated them. them, yeah. And we slowly bred them to get those attributes, chunky, fat, get the meat on them. Right. You know, we don't want the hair on them. We, it, we did that. We took the tusks away because they're fucking dangerous with tusks. Yeah. And so we did that. But as soon as they get back out in the wild, it kicks in and they fucking just grow hair, get tusks, get fucking meat and territory. Common knowledge, guys. <laughs> it, yeah. When, she, when I told her that, she's like, no. I was like, that's common knowledge. I was like, pig. no, it's not. <laughs> so if you have like a little, ooh, cute little pig, a mini pig, which is bullshit. There's no penny or, or uh, pygmy pygmy or micro. It's, it doesn't exist. Um, like the teacups? Yeah. Yeah. Teacup is a term for dog breeders to just to screw you out of more money. <laughs> the term teacup miniature. No, not mini. I'm sorry. Teacup, micro, all the other bullshit that mini. they put yeah, <laughs> before a dog. Uh, is bullshit. They only do that to get more money out of you because they're more desirable because they're so small and cute. Yeah. But the true fact of it is that animal is made by breeding the runt and the runt of another litter right. together to get smaller and smaller to look cuter, but it makes them have a fuckload of health problems. So many health problems. Their lifespan is so much shorter than it should be. Big time. So there's there is no such thing as a teacup shih tzu. Yeah. A micro Yorkie. It's just a it's, term. It's they just use. a term that they bred like little shitty ones together to make even smaller ones and they're gonna have really bad health problems. Yeah. The only there's only a handful of breeds that Mini goes in front of. There's not very many. Oh, like mini schnauzers. Mini schnauzers, that's one. Uh mini poodles is one. Yes. Mini Dobermans. Yeah. The miniature Doberman. Those are actual ones. Aren't they called toy poodles? Isn't that like their actual term though? Uh I believe it's miniature poodle. Oh, okay. Interesting. Well, yeah. But like all the other ones, you know. Miniature pincher. Like. Yeah, that's an actual one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when they say micro, mini, whatever. Yeah. It's just to screw you out of more money. That breed does not exist. Exactly. So, yeah. Well, fun facts. So let your little piggy, let around, your little piggy out in the, in, the, <laughs> in the woods to play for a little bit and call back in like a week and see what happens. <laughs> see what it looks like Ferocious. then. It'll fuck you up. Yes. It's so crazy what happens. And it happens super quickly. Really? Super quickly. Like they can devolve that fast. Under a month, they're dangerous. <gasps> That's they're dangerous. wild. It's so cool. That's, That's so cool that an animal can. Fucking do. insane. That's like when you brought up the other day uh, the thing about the locusts, and I was like, of course. Yeah, I didn't know that. What was that? Uh, all grasshoppers. Grass, all locusts are grasshoppers. Yes. Grasshoppers just when it releases an extreme amount of serotonin in yeah. them, they evolve like a fucking Pokemon into, uh, into a locust. Locusts. The giant folks. Yeah. Fun fact, guys. Yeah. Common knowledge, guys. But it, if you're an animal nerd like me, it is. It's like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I literally found this like thread online, and it was like, things you didn't know about animals. And every one that I didn't know, I'd tell my brother, and he's like, that's common knowledge. I'm like, no, it's fucking not. <laughs> All right, so moving on. <laughs> so I have some fun stories that were left out of my Italy trip. The Italy one. As soon as we stopped recording... I was like, didn't something else happen? And we're like, ah, <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Okay, so quick refresher. Um, Italy is where the gasoline story happened. Oh, 
where we met some friends and we also went to Greece that trip that we barely made the flight. Mama, we made it. Yeah. We were living. So one of these stories is in Italy. One of them is in Greece. So our first night in Italy, <laughs> we get in. Uh, we obviously go to our Airbnb. We unpack everything, blah, blah, blah. We like go to the grocery store. That's where we bought our gasoline. We come back. We head out. And then that's when we found our bar. And then at the end of the night, we're coming back. It is 4 a.m. And we get in the elevator. (laughs) So older buildings in Italy. Actually, I don't even know about the newer buildings. I've never been in a newer building in Italy. Really? But no, I went to the Vatican. (laughs) They don't even have elevators, I don't think. Oh, no, they do have elevators. I lied. And yes, they have regular elevators in those facilities. So the elevator that was in the building where our Airbnb was is on like a lever weight balanced mechanism. Okay, so like the ones that you'd see, the old school ones you'd see in like in movies and stuff. Super old school. It has like a cage to close. There's no like walls or anything to it. It looks like a lift pretty much. Yes, exactly. So you know how nobody really pays attention to like I don't know, the weight capacity on an elevator. I do. (laughs) If there's a fuckload of people and I'm about, uh, I'll take the next one. Oh Um, my God. mm -hmm. Okay, so I never pay attention. Because I don't ever want to be stuck in one. Okay, good point. And now that I think about it, at work so many times, if I'm late, I don't care. I will get in like the most cramped elevator and Mm -hmm. I hate it. Nope. But then I realized that it's honestly just just as slow because everyone stops on every freaking floor and I work on the seventh floor. It's not about the, the speed of getting there. It's oh, about me, actually it getting there. No, if I'm late, for me, it's the speed. <laughs> yeah, but you might not ever get there. So this elevator, we should have taken the weight capacity a little more seriously. <laughs> what did it say? Do you remember? I honestly, I want to say like 400 pounds. Oh, shit. That's a, that's a shitty elevator. I want to say it was something pretty low. Maybe 500 pounds. I, I don't that's even still, remember. That's a very light That's a very, was it a small elevator? Tiny. Like how many people, well, okay. Okay, four or 500 pounds is not a lot for an elevator. No, honestly, this elevator was the size of, let's say you're like small, you're as small as possible walk-in closet. Oh shit, okay, yeah, that's a very small. Like I'm thinking of my closet in our old house. I don't know how to describe that, but that size. Well, you would use the squares. Each square, the tile is a foot. They're 12 oh. by 12. Okay, there you go. It's like a... Like a two by two? Like mm, four? No, no, no. I would two say deep, it's like four feet. Wide, it's like three feet. Okay, yeah, that's a, a pretty small elevator for pretty sure. Pretty small, maybe four feet. But even then, that's a tiny, that's yeah. a pretty tiny but elevator. Four, 500 pounds, that's like, that's three dudes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I weigh like 175 pounds. Okay. So, that's not very many fucking people. <laughs> so like... Seven of us get in this elevator. Oh my, okay. Yes, I would have waited for the next elevator. Y'all go up, and whenever it comes back down, I'm going to make sure it's still working. There was like six or seven of us that got in this elevator. And we are in the elevator. It like, press the button. Two girls said, no, we are going to wait. There could have been two more people in there? Yeah. Oh my, yeah, smart. So they stayed on the ground. And we press the button, takes a little bit, and then it slowly starts to move up. Didn't even make it past first floor. Oh. <laughs> it literally stops halfway in between the, the floor and the ceiling. So we are just stuck there. And I'm like, oh. It just stopped moving. My God, it just stopped. Did it make a noise, like we're, an alarm or anything like no. that? No. And we're like pressing buttons. We're like trying to figure out something. I was like. Yeah, okay, not. what if I can, like, open the elevator? Like, can I squeeze out? And I'm like, probably not a good idea, because once I get out, what if this elevator starts moving? Yeah, I've seen like, Final Destination. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, like, <laughs> all, like, the most typical thing in scary movies. If you get in an elevator and you get stuck and someone starts crawling out, you're like, this bitch is going to die. Yeah, definitely. Like, like, the doors half. are going to fucking close. Like, when you're a little kid and you fuck around with Play-Doh and it just, pop, like, right in half, like, that's what happens. <laughs> so I've seen plenty of movies. I was like, okay, I'm scared. It is, like... I don't know, 20, 30 minutes go by maybe. And finally I'm like, start knocking on people's doors. 
Like, I don't even know what to do at this point. Yeah. Oh, y'all are at, like, an Airbnb? Yeah, we're at an okay. Airbnb. So, we're in, like, an apartment so you're not, like, building. Okay, yeah, you're not, like, at a hotel, at a hotel where there's a lobby or anything. No. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Start knocking on people's doors. Like, there isn't a, a doorman, nothing. Yeah. So, all of us have our phones, obviously, but we don't know how to call, like, Italian firefighters. Yeah, you're going to... Yeah, exactly. That's what you need. Like, maintenance <laughs> like, for the building or a firefighter. Yeah, yeah I was like, I exactly have no idea. Need. So... Is it 911 over there? I Probably have, fucking not. Honestly, <laughs> I have no idea. And if I called 911 there, Lord knows it wouldn't dial 911 there. Like, they have all the other numbers in front of it. Oh, yeah. Like, international whatever. Yeah, but I don't know if you... If you're in international mode and you, like... I don't know. I have no I, fucking I have clue. no idea. No clue. You know, like that option you told me the other day, that feature, the SOS? Oh, yeah. If you, yeah. like, pick your phone real fast, it just fucking, like, sends out a <laughs> fucking alert. Like, send the military. I'm being kidnapped. Oh, no. Stop. 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 Stop that. <laughs> it makes a really loud noise, too. Yes, it does. So, anyways, um, finally, I'm telling the girls on the floor, it is. <laughs> two that didn't rise. Yeah. <laughs> Help. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, in a cage. Help. So, at the bottom, it is short Vespa and Karina. Oh, God. And finally, if Karina Kar- said it's not good. Hold up, Karina's fucking wild. If, she, if she'll do some crazy shit, if Karina said, I don't think it's good idea to get on that elevator, I would have gotten the fuck. If Karina's not doing it, I'm getting the fuck off of this. If she says it's not a good idea, I'm definitely like, not no, tempting it's it. It's fine, everything's fine. What, if, what was Karina's major? She's a mechanical engineer. You should have fucking listened to the <laughs> mechanical engineer that's like, you should not get on that elevator. Like, as we're in the elevator, Karina's like, it's a weight balanced mechanism system, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, get me the fuck out of the elevator, Karina. <laughs> and she's like, well, it stopped because I'm like, I don't care, get me out. <laughs> they were, you said six or seven. How many were girls? All of us. Okay, so you were like at least one and a half times over. Yeah. That fucking no <laughs> weight limit. Not like yeah. a little bit over. Like no, no, no. A person. <laughs> no, no, no. Very, you were like very two, Bombay. Three people. What the fuck? So, anyways, they finally start knocking on people's doors, mm-hmm. and I'm, I want to say it was like the first person that they knocked on that answered because they were probably like, "Who the fuck is knocking on our door at four a.m.?" Oh, yes. <laughs> So they get out and they just and it's a whole point. Like seven drunk fucking girls, <laughs> but they're wasted in an elevator. And they just point to us and they're like, "Policia!" <laughs> Policia! <laughs> Help! And they're like, "What?" They're like, "They're stuck, like no move." <laughs> I can't believe none of y'all can speak Italian too. No. <laughs> like, not even a smidge of it. Um, well, I think the girls that were, like, studying abroad there knew, like, some things, but we were in the fucking elevator. We were in the elevator. (laughs) (laughs) So, finally, they understand what we're saying. They call somebody, and some Italian firefighters show up. They rescue us. Four in the morning. So, our first night in Italy at 4 a.m., we got rescued by some hot Italian firefighter. Jesus. (laughs) How, How far was the fucking, like... How many stairs were there? You didn't just... How many floors was it? I don't remember how many floors. Was it the second but floor? But I do... Was I, it the second floor? Like, I, beep. I don't know. Oh, my God. No, but I was going to say, I do remember, though, whatever floor we were on, it was, like, an absurd amount of elevators. Like, to get to the next floor, it was, like, three flights of stairs. Okay. Like, it went, like, one way, then you had stairs like along the wall and then you had stairs going up oh okay. so it went like all the way around yes yeah yeah. so there was a lot of stairs okay 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 um, so anyways that happened <laughs> so how long were y'all in there in total um i don't know probably like an hour oh fuck that see i don't ever want to be second one okay or... but the thing is at least it was like an open elevator like it wasn't in i wasn't in a confined space like, I could still see the first floor. It felt open. Yeah. I could talk to my friends on the outside. Kind of. That's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about the cable snapping. Oh, fuck. Like, if I get trapped in an elevator by two thoughts, or the cable's going to snap, I'm going to die. Or I've seen The Devil Inside, that movie. Oh, well, fuck that. Because if you're trapped in one, and then the lights go out, and then the lights come out and someone's dead, what are you going to do? Well... You know what? In this situation, I knew everyone in the elevator. That's what they. And thought. if that's what you think. And if there was there was a killer, I knew exactly who it was. 
<laughs> what happens if they're the first one dead? Then I know the next person. I got it. I got oh, this. Shit. I got this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. I've seen a lot of Final Destination not trying to squeeze through the fucking the opening. Yeah, again. no. But if this cable snapped, we were on the first floor. Like, it didn't go down any further. Yeah, it just probably bruised up and... Yeah, it probably hurt like a bitch. Oh, for sure, because the whole the whole car itself it would just it's got to be very heavy itself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's straight up like metal cages. Yeah. But yep. So well, I remember when you told me that? I told you about my buddy that uh yeah. One time I went to go visit him. <laughs> oh, hey, buddy. Hey, Kevin. How how you been? You know. He's like, uh, okay, blah blah. He's like, so. I got fucking stuck in an elevator twice. This month. <laughs> I was like, what? In a month. In a month, twice. One month. He's like, never been stuck in one twice. And he's like, one of them was not so bad. The other one was pretty fucking bad. What are the odds? Yeah, he said one was like 15, 20 minutes. And he's like, the other one was like an hour and a half. And then I think the long one, he had his like toddler son with him. Oh, yeah. And he was like getting anxious and crying. And it was like crowded in there. He's like, dude, it was terrible. I was like, oh, oh my, my God. God. I cannot imagine. And they were in, like, different places, right? It wasn't yeah, the, it wasn't same, the building. same building. Yeah, it wasn't the same building. Like, same one. No, he's like, are you fucking kidding me again? That's insane. I would go ape shit. But like, that's bad luck, dude. For real. Yeah, actually, though. All right. So then we move on from Italy to Greece. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we're in Greece. And um, we go to this strip of clubs. We, like, asked the concierge. She was, like, a pretty young guy, probably in his 30s. Um, seemed pretty cool. He spoke pretty good English. So, oops, sorry. I don't know what that was. So, we um, asked him where to go. And apparently, there's like a strip of clubs that you go to in Athens. Okay, cool. And we're like, okay, dope. Or it's actually like right outside of Athens or whatever. So, we head to this strip of clubs. We go have dinner, um, drinks, and then we head over to the club and there's a guy at the front who's like a promoter mm -hmm. blah 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 he's like oh my god these beautiful girls like yeah you're with come Google. inside yeah, all college <laughs> girls hot like yeah 21 22 exactly yeah. so we go inside and he's like drinks on us whatever and i'm like okay yeah, sure. <laughs> so we start like getting all of um, the, the first round of drinks was on him. Then we like start buying more drinks. Um, we met other people. We met this Australian guy mm -hmm. whose accent was so thick. <laughs> I didn't even think he spoke English really? when he started talking. Well, they have a lot of slang too. <laughs> yeah, a they do. Slang. For sure. Um, this club is awesome. They're like playing American music, mm -hmm. like a ton of people there speak English. So it was pretty awesome. That's because most Europeans speak like multiple languages. We're the only That's dumb true. dumbs that, uh, <laughs> Kalua just scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Our animals are going wild today. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right, though. A lot of them speak multiple languages, mm -hmm. and we just suck. Yeah, we, just, <laughs> we barely, like, if if we speak another one, it's always, like, Spanish. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Um, so, we're in this club. We're having such a great time. And we, like, keep going to the promoter to get us more drinks. And then he starts to, like, realize that we drink a lot. <laughs> A lot. And he's like, another round. <laughs> what yeah, did I get round. myself into? <laughs> so another thing about the clubs there were that the bathrooms were co-ed. Mm -hmm. So like, obviously all of them have stalls and stuff, but they are co-ed. So this guy starts to realize we drink a lot. These bathrooms are co-ed. This, all of this is so new to us, mm -hmm. but this club is dope. They have like lounges and like VIP areas. Like it's really, really cool. So... Then the promoter kind of starts to like slow down on our yeah. <laughs> free drink. Yeah, y'all are costing me a buttload of money. Yeah, literally. Well, then um, Karina and I have this brilliant idea of teaching Greece how to do body shots. Yeah. Isn't Karina Italian or I mean Greek? Yes, Karina is Greek as fuck. Yeah. Like super Greek. We were in the land of her people. She was living large there. She loved it. So. We go to the promoter and we tell him like, we need four shots of whatever it was. And he was like, for what? And Karina's was like, we're gonna show you something. He's like, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he gives us the shots. They have like, like I said, they have lounge areas. So they have like couches and yeah. then like little coffee tables and stuff. So we lay Karina on the table and I do a body shot. And Karina tells the guy, she's like, record this. You're gonna want this. Hey. 
<laughs> so the guy records it and he's like, oh my God, do it again. I didn't get a good enough video. And I'm like, uh-huh, sure. <laughs> like, okay, uh, put your own, please. Uh, another shot. So we do it like a few times for him. And then he ended up putting it like on his Instagram, Facebook, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Well, then we have my friend, Brittany. Good old Brittany, sugar daddy in Sin City. Yeah. So she comes out and she is freaking out. And we're like, what's going on? Well, somebody had stolen her phone. Oh, shit. And we're like, oh, fuck. Oh, also forgot to mention, the concierge that told us to go to this strip of clubs Mm -hmm. is at this club. Yeah, he probably got off work and that's where he goes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he didn't tell us like what club to go to specifically. We just kind of walked down the strip and we're like, oh, "Oh, this one sounds cool. He just told you to go to that strip. Yeah, exactly. And we're like, what's up? Mm. He's like, I don't know you. (laughs) I don't fucking Americans. God damn it. (laughs) Don't talk to me. So (laughs) we like keep going up to him. We're like trying to say hi. And he's like, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. And we're like, okay, bye. (laughs) So that guy's at the club too. Well, then we are on a fucking goose chase for uh, oh, for, Brittany's for Brittany's phone. phone? Yes. yes. And we have the entire club looking, literally. We what? got the promoter. We had everybody that we could find looking. We got our concierge. Oh, my God. <laughs> so annoying. I know. When we people suck. Do that, when people do that at, at uh, the bar I used to work at, okay, I legitimately would go ask the other bartender, has anyone turned in a phone? And we'd yeah. Like, no. Well, can you look? No, I'm fucking working. You're welcome to look for the phone you lost. If it gets turned in, I, for sure, I got you. Yeah. But I'm not going to go no, fucking we, look like, for your phone. So we told the promoter, we told, he went and told like all the bartenders, the no. DJ, like everybody. Fuck that. And then the concierge guy we have looking. And then obviously there is however many of us girls, six of us girls, mm-hmm. looking for the phone. Yeah. Or seven girls. Didn't you have like find my iPhone or some shit? Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. So we did find my iPhone, phone is off. Oh, yeah. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Like somebody intentionally stole her phone. Mm -hmm. And so we are looking everywhere. Before we even thought of find my iPhone, we're looking everywhere. We're like looking underneath the couches and the bathrooms. Where was her phone? Like how was it stolen? Like out of her purse? Fucking Out of her front pocket. She's wearing like pants? Jeans? Yeah. Out of her front pocket? Yes. Someone pulled an, like an iPhone? Yeah. Person. Someone pulled an iPhone out of, aren't like girls' fucking pockets tight? Super tight. Okay, then that guy deserves the phone. Oh, no, <laughs> he fucking, does That's impressive. Front pocket? Brittany's going to hear this and be so mad at I'm you. I'm sorry, but <laughs> when I'm in Vegas and I, when I have a lot of cash, I carry it in my front pocket. I will not put it in my back pocket. Okay. It's uncomfortable as fuck. I don't give a fuck. It's going to be real hard so, to say. So when I but, tell you the next part, you're going to be like, what the fuck? Okay. So we're looking for her phone. Obviously, it's off. We're all calling it. We're all doing find my iPhone. It's, it's not gone. there. That bitch is gone. It is now gone. Yeah, it's been taken. Well, then short Vespa over here starts going through her pictures from the night. Mm-hmm. So her and Brittany were in the bathroom, and they had a floor-to-ceiling mirror. Okay. So they went and were taking, like, pictures in the mirror. Mm-hmm. And they said that a guy just walked up behind them to get in their picture and so the guy's in one picture, you see Lindsay's phone, and the very next picture is just them two, and her phone is gone. So the guy slipped it out of her pocket while they're taking a picture. Oh, for real? Yes. Did you see him, like, pulling it no, out? No, it's you just there. See there. This picture then, is one minute apart. Like. So that in the next picture, he's gone, and so is the phone. Yeah. So you just, like, probably, like, reached around, like, you know, you put your arm around someone's waist, and like, whoop. Yeah, literally. And, like, pushed her, or, how, you know how they say pickpockets do it? Oh, it's all distraction. Or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Fucked up. Super yeah. fucked up. So then we get, we tell the concierge guy, and he's like, okay, well, like, let me know if you hear anything. Sucks for you. Whatever. Yeah. yeah, and we're like, okay. So we go back. Brittany is super upset, obviously. She is studying abroad. Oh, for she's the already rest. There. Yes. So this is November, and she doesn't go home until almost, I think like January 1st or like December 31st, something months, around there. Yeah. yeah. And so she is freaking out. She's like, what do I do? I'm in a completely different country, completely different continent. Like, you got to. Get it, go get another fucking phone. Yeah, so she had to get like a just a super cheap phone over there. Mm-hmm. But the next day, um, 
whoever stole her phone finally turned it on. And oh. so we could see find my iPhone, but it was nowhere near us. Yeah, of course. And so we go to the hotel concierge guy and we're like, where is this? And he goes, you cannot go there. And we're like, what? what? He was like, you cannot go there. Well, what why not? Mean? It is super fucking dangerous. Like you oh, actually like cannot go there. Like town. super <laughs> ghetto Athens, wherever it was. Like it was the ghetto part. So it was probably some thug that was in the club, like some drug dealer or, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, and he jacked the phone and then bounced. Mm-hmm. He was like, wow. you can't go there. And we're like, what do you mean? Yes, we can. He's like, no, you, like don't go there. <laughs> so that's, that's probably what that, that, that's what that guy was in there in the club doing, stealing phones. Yep. So super fucked Just up. Drunk Americans. Oh, that's going to be an easy one. I know. But yeah, super sad. So did you get the phone back? No. Oh, for real? Yes. This, was, gonna be like, like <laughs> this awesome... is not a happy ending story. <laughs> I told you she went and got a super cheap phone overseas. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, so literally, she she the, didn't. the concierge guy said that he was going to like go there with like some of his friends to see if they could get it. But okay, bro, you're going a little too like, We were all like leaving far the and next above your, day. Your pay grade. Like, don't go risk your life over here for fucking phone. This was a big dude. Uh, still if he's saying don't fuck you know well, yeah know. but still like if you grew up there and like you know the area i don't know how it is over in okay Greece, well like... if someone walked into my fucking bar and she got drunk and lost her fucking phone and then she came up to me the next day and was like do you know where this is and if it was super ghetto and they'd be like can you go get it i'd be like fuck you no <laughs> go fuck yourself no that's where people get shot well i don't know what this well, guy does here. i don't give a fuck what if this guy's he in like the greek a- mafia you he don't worked, know. He's a concierge at a hotel. That's what he is. Well, I'm saying, what if like his family owned the hotel? I I don't know. Okay, I think uh, this isn't like a bottom movie. line. <laughs> bottom line, I don't know. I thought you got the phone back for some reason. No, <laughs> we did not get the phone back. Oh man, that's fucking funny. Too bad so, that guy couldn't get into the phone and like post pictures. That would have been awful. That would have been funny. No, <laughs> Brittany was super upset. You don't understand. She was sobbing she was like what am i gonna do like i'm in a completely different country she was just scared she was like how am i gonna contact my family blah 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 so she was using all of our phones and then um obviously call parents off of one of your phones and then go buy another one the next day yeah and then obviously whenever she went back to like her apartment she could talk to them through her computer like facebook messenger etc so I mean, at least, like, she had that. But she got a new phone. Everything's all good, guys. Now she has another iPhone. <laughs> I can't believe you jacked it from her front pocket. That's impressive. Isn't that wild? Yeah. I mean, they always say, uh, I mean, I, I'm not, like, talking shit about any European countries, but they always say, well, you know, watch for pickpocketers. Oh, always. Always, always. I mean, even, like, in the even city. Even being a tourist, like, New York or Vegas. Yeah, fucking anywhere. Dude, check your, you know, like, they pray no, on absolutely. places where tourism happens. And that's the thing. Like, Brittany has always been so careful. She even got one of those, like, little neck, like, purses, you know, that it stays right here. <laughs> no, I don't know. What, the, what do you mean? <laughs> it's like a neck purse. Like, it sits right here, but it's like a, a lanyard. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. She even had one of those. She was like, guys, I'm ready. I was like, oh pickpocketers got nothing on you, Brittany. I actually had a, a friend of mine that went to Thailand recently. Mm-hmm. She had a, like, a steel safe fanny pack. Oh, yeah. But it didn't go on the outside. It, like, went, like, went on the inside. On, like, under her shirt or, yeah. like, whatever. I was like, the fuck is that? She had pickpocketers. I was like, All right, well, you know what? You're being safe, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You. you have to, like, be prepared for that, you know? Yeah. And a lot of girls, like, don't want to take purses out for that reason. Like, if somebody takes your whole purse, like, what are you going to do? So, usually, we keep our stuff, like, very close on us in our pockets. Unfortunately, our pockets are tiny as fuck. So, anything could slip out or, like, pop out. Anything. So, you know. (laughs) Well, I thought that story was going to have a different ending. (laughs) No, not really. Um, Well, I have one more story. Go for it. All right. So... We're back in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> uh-huh. All right. For on the first or second spring break? Second spring break. Okay. So I was rooming with my really good friend, Leanne. Mm-hmm. And this was after dinner. And at these places, I mean, you eat a fuck ton. Oh, yeah. Because it's all inclusive. Mm-hmm. And like we said, you drink a fuck ton. Yeah. Every time you go on vacation, you come back like 10 pounds heavier. Oh, literally. Yeah. So we had a friend who brought... I don't actually, I was thinking about it. I don't remember if he brought it with him or if he bought it like on the beach for $5 or something. 
but he got one of those massive like water bottles not even water bottles it's like a jug it's like <laughs> the size of a milk gal- of a milk jug okay yeah, yeah like huge thing and every time he went to the bar he would have the bartender fill it up with long island iced tea mm. so he was getting fucked up yeah, <laughs> constantly sure. uh, that's all he was sipping on like the entire time and so one Why? day that's a gross drink because it's super strong yeah, but there's a lot of, I mean... No, wait. Tom Collins. That's what he was drinking. Tom Collins is not super strong. What's in a Tom Collins? It's, uh, like, vodka. Oh, no, 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 You could do, like, different kind of Collins. You do vodka and gins, and it's, like, either... It's citrus-based, citrus so yeah. you have, like, lime or lemon juice, simple syrup, and then, like, soda. I don't even know why I said that, because I tasted it, and I didn't like it, because it was tea. I hate tea. It's It was, it was a Long Island oh, iced tea, guys. <laughs> You know, there's no tea in a Long Island iced tea, right? Really? Yeah, it's Sprite, and then you top it off with Coke. Oh, well, maybe <laughs> I didn't like because of the it's Coke. It's that sour, and then Sprite, and then Coke. And you, when you hit, when it's Sprite, and then you throw the little bit of Coke on it, that's what gives it that color. Oh. Yeah, it's not fucking tea. All right, I probably sound really stupid right now, guys. No, I bet a lot of people don't know that. No, the only <laughs> drink that I know, or a common drink that has it, it would be like a hot toddy or like a uh, an alcoholic Arnold Palmer. Oh, yeah. Those actually have tea in it. Right. Mm-hmm. So he is drinking his Long Island iced tea that does not contain any tea. Fun fact. So, <laughs> but I didn't like it, and now I'm thinking, oh, it's probably it's the it's Coke. It's sweet and sour. No, it's oh. just a splash of Coke. It's oh, just, so it's just it's sweet your, and it's sour. Your liquors, sour, Sprite. It's like half sour, half Sprite, and then Coke. Mm. Is that color? Okay, I'm also very picky about alcohol. I'm not one of those people who like drinks everything. That's not a good cocktail. So I like don't it like just has anything. It's a blend of fucking liquor. Yeah, and it's always the cheapest house liquor. That's by the way true. That goes into well, those. but that's the thing. Anywhere at these all-inclusive resorts are using cheap Get, liquor. But pick any fucking drink and tell them to make it a strong ass rum and pineapple, or you know, a vodka. Oh or yeah. Can just put the equal amount of your liquor. Exactly. No, we like either I was drinking straight up champagne, no, mimosas, um, vodka lemonade, or if I was feeling fun then i'd get a frozen drink yeah but yeah so anyways it is after dinner (laughs) and we are all hanging out in my room i feel like my room was probably the closest to like the hub so that's why we all hung out there Mm -hmm. um and so we were in there hanging out everything and leanne all of a sudden looks over at our friend long island (laughs) iced tea over here (laughs) and it's happening Hand over the mouth. Oh, yeah. Cheeks starting to puff up. Sputum coming. Oh, no. And Leanne gets up, screams at him. I'm like ta- sitting on my bed talking to somebody. And all of a sudden, I see him running to the bathroom. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And Leanne's like, he's going to throw up everywhere. I was like, yeah. so-and-so's in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. That's not going to be a good confrontation. And all of a sudden, we hear it happen. Like, it's the small hallway that includes, like, the bathroom door, and then it opens up to the bedroom. Okay. So I can't even see him at this point. He's, like, yeah, in the hallway. Right around the corner. Yep, and I just hear splashing. And oh. I'm like, what <laughs> the fuck? And then the smell hits. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, everyone, open my porch door. Like, open all the doors. Yes. I cannot smell this right now. It was god awful it smelled like like who hot like you know when you combine all the sauces that's literally exactly yeah, like what it smelled that. that's exactly what it smelled like like meat with a bunch of sauce that's gross i know it was disgusting and it looks like it too it was absolutely nasty you were where were you oh you were at the beach so it was tile floor right yeah all tile all yeah, yeah. tile not, everything yeah, you're at the beach all those tile. Yeah. yeah so literally we finally walk over there <laughs> The door is covered. Oh, you just the- fucking threw up on the door? <laughs> and it's just flowing down? The floor is covered. And then whoever is in the bathroom opens the door. And he's like, "I, it, it's literally just flooding in here. It like, it was through. just going underneath the bathroom door. And yeah. he said he was peeing. And then he just started to see it, like, come underneath the door. And he was like, what's happening? What the fuck is going on out there? He couldn't hear y'all, like, yelling or whatever? No, I guess not. Oh, my God. But, oh, my God. It was so gross. And then, of course, everyone's like, starts to help. Everyone's, like, picking up towels and just throwing them in the bathtub. Like, cleaning it. Yeah. Like, wet towels, everything. That's fucking gross. 
And I'm like, just leave him in the bathtub. I'm going to go get the maid right now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, immediately call him. Yeah. yeah that's the best thing to do. So I mean, they, they're gonna fucking hate they you. cleaned our Tip room, everything. Like, it was it was fine. But super nasty. Yeah, super sure. disgusting. But it was kind of funny to yeah. look back oh, on it now. Sure. Definitely. <laughs> I just can't imagine being the guy peeing in the bathroom and seeing, like, yeah, just a, piss a brown like, liquid. is going on? <laughs> Coming. <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to leave. <laughs> To stay in uh, I don't want to open the door. <laughs> yeah, for sure not. Then you can't even get out. You gotta like jump. Yeah, jump well, like, like a even pile of you know, like in those scary movies where you see like black liquid cover the floor and stuff, yeah. <laughs> like underneath the door. That's probably what it looked like today. Just slime coming in, like <laughs> yeah. so nasty. Do you want to know what uh, really annoying millennials call Long Island iced teas? What? They order lits, L-I-T. Oh, that's so annoying. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You know, I don't know if it's millennials. Don't call it a lit. What are the new? What are the new ones? Oh, TikTokers. TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> the, the new generation TikToks. of people. Those TikToks. Wait, what am I? I'm like Gen Gen Z, and then it goes millennials, or millennials and Gen Z. I don't know. I was never good at spelling. I, that was, <laughs> what? The I don't know which one goes first. I think it's millennials and Gen Z. I don't remember. But I know TikToks are the latest ones. Those are the youngest. But that's not like official. Oh, that's it's just official. what they call Those freaking little TikToks are annoying. <laughs> All right, TikToks don't call Long Island iced tea lits. lits. Yeah. If you go to a bar and you ask for a lits. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I could like pull my bartender friends and we'll have a giant list of shit not to say <laughs> yeah. a lot. Especially like a, a Tito's and vodka. People say it all the time. What? All the fucking time. They say I want a Tito's and vodka. Yeah, they're not. They're not paying attention to what they're saying. For real. Are they stupid? And you'd be like, so you want house vodka and then more vodka on top? And then like, Tito's? no, I meant a vodka water or a vodka cran. You're like, that's not what you fucking said. You said a Tito's. You said all the time. All a Tito's and the vodka. Time. Yeah. Guys, be classy. Just stick to gin and tonics. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's always my choice. <laughs> that's my go-to. Gin and tonic with two limes. <laughs> That was Did my you go-to. Know that um, that drinking uh, a buttload pirates built up a immunity to malaria. No, I did not know that. So because why do you know that? I don't know if it's pirates <laughs> because I was a mixologist, a bartender. Oh, uh, I'm not sure if it's pirates. I might be wrong on that. It, but some sailors, <laughs> okay. some sailors for sure, or some people on some fucking boats did it because they would mix their tonic with their booze mm -hmm. and tonic uh contains uh what is it called quinine yeah and that fights malaria wow so i'd be good if i went to africa <laughs> yeah uh, i don't know about fucking africa <laughs> but yeah they discovered that that it fights malaria and they're like nope that's why those fuckers didn't get sick because they're fucking drunk all the time and that's what they drink with their rum or vodka like yeah because they drink so much tonic with it oh wow i have um I have a few friends actually who went over to Malawi, Africa, and they were in like life nets. I was in it for a little bit. Never got to go to Africa though. Uh, and they go take mosquito nets over to them to like help prevent malaria. Yeah. And they had to get a buttload of shots oh, before yes, they went. For and sure. one of them actually got malaria in like high school when he went. That fucking sucks. Yeah. That's no joke. No, not at actually, all. Actually, we brought that up the other day. Uh, we were talking. <laughs> I put a meme on my sister's page and it was um, it was this guy sta standing in the middle of the street of like a post apocalypto uh, city like there's nobody around oh, and he's standing in the middle of the street yeah. looking around and it says um, the mosquitoes when they wake up from winter and she didn't get the joke because mosquitoes are going to wake up from winter and then everyone's in quarantine yeah nobody's like, outside where the fuck is everyone <laughs> like looking around like uh, where did everyone go well, she she eventually got the joke days later. And then I didn't even tell him I didn't get it. Brought it up in the it. car days later. I literally was sitting in the car, and like he said, this like three days later maybe. Yeah. I hadn't said anything. I didn't even respond to the meme on Facebook because I actually didn't I was get like, it. Why didn't she like that meme? It's fucking funny. And then I went and liked it three days later. And later in the car, I was like, you know that meme? I get it now. And he was like, you didn't get it, like. It was super funny. No, that one took but me a little bit. That's when you brought up, uh, you know how like all animals have a purpose. I was like, not fucking mosquitoes. Yeah, mosquitoes. You're can like, go don't they die. have some um, 
help on certain populations or you know like a lot of bugs do people well, yeah like, like symbiotic relationships yeah. in the ecosystem but bugs a lot of bugs carry a very important role a lot of them are detrivores which is key because there would be just dead shit everywhere all the yeah time. but not mosquitoes they don't serve any purpose okay so mosquitoes they don't can help go pollinate die. anything like a lot of bees and insects like that do. yeah they don't help keep any pest control aren't like spiders super important yes for sure a lot of bugs are so yeah. even though you, a lot of people hate spiders, they play an important role in your lives. I don't fuck with spiders unless I think that um, they're a danger to my dogs. Yeah. If they're a danger to my dogs, sorry, you're going to die. Yeah. But well, if not, like, I'll take you outside. I've, I've only one, and then one down in the fire pit, a big tarantula outside, and I let it go. Really? Yeah, I picked him up. It's in, it's in, what do they do, sting, bite? Um, I mean, they can bite you. Don't their hairs, like, burn or something? Their hairs, uh, actually... Fun little animal fact. Common, Common knowledge. knowledge. <laughs> uh, itching powder. Original itching powder was made out of tarantula hairs. Oh, okay. When a predator comes up behind them, mm-hmm. they release, like, poof, like a fucking, like, what people think porcupines do, like, release their quills and shoot them. Yeah. They do that with all their hairs, and it's so irritating to your skin. It's like people that have ever done roofing in attics, uh, fiberglass insulation oh, is okay. super irritating to you. Yeah. Just like that. And they used to use it back in the day for itching powder, like joke itching powder. Wow. Aren't they dangerous to the dogs, though? Like, if they eat them? Um, uh, no. No. Oh. That's like, uh, venom is different. Venom has to be injected into your bloodstream. Oh, okay. Like so you, if the dogs just ate it, or yeah. if they ate a snake, then they'd oh, be, be fine. fine. You can oh. drink, like, rattlesnake uh, venom. Mm. Not going to kill you. You'll process it, and it'll be done. But if it gets into your bloodstream, that's not good. Yeah. Oh, man. It's different. So we are now entering the dry season oh in Texas. God. Yeah. And when dry season comes around, we get a buttload of animals. And they're terrifying animals, though. So we never had this problem growing up when we lived like uh, in neighborhoods. Yeah, never. Now that we live a little bit out of city limits and uh, a little bit into the country, we're not way out there. But we're surrounded by woods. We have nothing but woods, yeah. Uh, it's bad. Every time the heat starts to come and winter's like really over, you know, like this past week it was in the 90s. Yeah. It's fucking ridiculous already. And now it's like in the 50s. Yeah, and this like, is fucking Texas. It's bipolar. Weird. But when the heat starts to come, all the itty little uh, creepy crawlies, as you like to say, uh, they, they seek shelter inside or they come inside to hunt. And so when it gets bad in the summer, I see at least a scorpion a day. Yeah, super Scorpion, bad. Scorpion, centipedes, a lot of wasps. And, a uh, lot of wasps. I've never seen a tarantula inside. I've seen it outside and in either. the garage, but, but we need the garage door. Then there's this infestation of daddy long legs. Oh, a lot of them. Guys, I don't know if you know what a, a cluster of daddy long legs looks Their like. The balls? Yeah. It literally just looks like this black nest and like let's say a corner of like a ceiling and it is literally hundreds of daddy long legs just like like combined thousands when when they make the balls there's a lot of them yeah okay so it looks like a tumbleweed made out of hair yeah yeah yeah. but the hair is all their legs individually moving and then like when you see it from afar you're like the fuck is that thing and you get close like oh my god (laughs) they're moving that is so (laughs) many goddamn spiders i literally told him i saw one for the first time um like since I've been home, so mm-hmm. that means it's starting. I saw one outside, and I was like, "It's starting." Oh, they're coming. <laughs> they're coming. The scorpions is what I don't like because of the dogs. Yeah, definitely, and they're a bitch to kill. I feel like a lot of people haven't tried not really? to. Yes, they are. They're so hard. Like you can't just step on it once with your shoe and it's dead. That's not how it works. Yeah, if you have a good shoe. Okay. If you have like a soft soled shoe, then no. But I mean, their exoskeleton is very fragile. When you crush it, it, I mean, they're done. Their internal organs are gone. Yeah. It's just like a spider. Like, when they freshly molt, they have to be very careful and sensitive because they're soft. You can kill them by touching them. Oh. I feel like every time I try to kill a scorpion, it takes me, like, ten tries to, like, step on it or kill it Just pick it, it up something. by the tail and you'll be fine. No, fuck. By the sting. No. no. I don't want to do that. Because I'll probably do it wrong and get stung, which I've only been stung by a scorpion once, and it was while I was sleeping. Oh, yeah. And I, like shot up threw all my blankets off and was like i just got stung by something yeah i've been stung sleeping and it too. You're also- hurt like yeah. a bitch but yeah running under hot water if you ever get stung by a scorpion or for that or a wasp matter, or like a, a wasp or a, a spider that's not really venomous um that's just mildly 
uh, just run it under super hot water, as hot as you can stand for like 10 minutes, especially with uh, a lot of fire ants and other kind of ants. Yeah. Uh, it neutralizes their uh, their venom in your body. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't spread. And it, it's going to be hot and it'll hurt a little bit. But then afterwards, you'll be fine. Yeah, it this, won't, it won't sting days. anymore. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that was an interesting episode. Yeah, I had some random stuff that we uh, didn't get to put in the other ones. Yeah, for sure. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We had some funny ones in this one. What are you looking at? She's eating something. I don't know what she's eating. Oh, great. Mimosa, my little, my little chunkers over here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening to this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget, if you have any hunters, ask scare them, them with that, a yeah. snipe. <laughs> ask them about their snipe stories. It'll be really fun to hear some of y'all's. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you guys so much. Please go watch on YouTube. And if you're listening on iTunes, please do that. And subscribe, subscribe, like, rate, all of those fun things. All of our social media is at Effing Priceless. Yep. And huge thanks to our bands once again. Yep. Intro music is coming from you from Saltwater Slide. They're uh, local guys from San Antonio. They're really good. Uh, they do reggae. They're a really chill vibe. Uh, really good band. Good group of guys. They do a lot of environmental cleanup. They actually put on a, a beach cleanup in the, uh, by the coast here in Texas. And they put on a big-ass, cool, free concert. And all you have to do is help clean up the beach. So... So guys are really good, and we like their music. Check yeah. them out on their uh, social media, YouTube, other Absolutely. Platforms. Yep. Their song is Good Times in our intro, and our outro music is by Love Kill the Hero. Wally. Their lead singer is Wally Robles, one of our good friends. And their song is So Damn Nice. Be sure to check out their NPR Tiny Dust submission video. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next Tuesday. It's getting late. My body's tired. That's all.